Hey everybody, it's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. Uh, we have another amazing guest today, actually uh, slightly more amazing than, than usual. We're not interviewing an agent today. We actually have Brad Inman on the show from Inman News, who you're all familiar with and maybe you don't know the man behind the scenes. So we're going to talk to him about a bunch of stuff, including what's coming down the pipeline for real estate agents as far as technology and some of the trends that are taking place in the industry and how that affects us as agents brokers and all that good stuff. We got a lot of stuff to get into, mm. but we'll do that in a second. Uh, Greg, the junior yes. grant master himself, is in the co-pilot seat. As always, Greg, what's up today? Matt, what is up, you pimpalicious? Dude, you you're like a you're like a junior jet setter. So we're so we have the junior grandmaster who is me, and then we're gonna do you as the junior jet setter because this you are constantly in a plane. Thank God you're built for planes, man, because I am not built for planes. <laughs> I <laughs> said I was built for planes. <laughs> I, I like to travel. I I abhor yeah. planes. I'm just not you're not six for five, but dude. Okay, so check this out. I'm, it was so much fun. I went up and I was a guest speaker at a lunch and learn uh, today with the YPN up on Benicia, and I gotta tell you, man, it was radically different than the YPN I was associated with here. Do we sit down? There's a bunch of cool people sitting around hanging out. We're like all of a sudden I looked around and I realized I'm like it's 12 noon and everybody's got a beer in their hand. I'm like, <laughs> well. I can't be left out of this club, the Cool Kid Club. So I had a beer, hung out, we talked about video, we ate pizza, you know, we're all going to the gun range here in the next couple of weeks, go shooting. I'm like, I need to be around these people. This is my clan. This, I know where I've been, the cloth I have been cut from now, and I have found them north of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You can tell you're not in downtown San Francisco, Greg. Uh, no, I'm no pretty man. sure they're a little thin on the gun ranges down there. <laughs> <laughs> At least the ones we know about, because right. the streets should not be used as gun ranges, Matt, even yeah, though yeah. sometimes people do do it. Yeah, sadly they do. All right. So for those of us that are, while we wait for people to join us live, just want to thank you for doing that. But if you're watching the replay here on YouTube, make sure to hear it's uh, subscribe. And then if you want the audio version nestled between your ears, just go to uh, iTunes or Stitcher and uh, subscribe there. And then want to quickly thank uh, Viral Marketing for helping make podcasts and hangouts like these happen. You can go to uh, gregsmarketingexamples.com, see what they do from there. And uh, then check out Homing In, as always, uh, for you know seller leads and all that good stuff. So before we get into all that, we'll mention that. And Greg's got some shout-outs and stuff. But let's dive right in with uh, with Brad, and um, just want to welcome you officially to the show, Brad. Thank you so much for joining us. This is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. I love talking to real estate agents, and yeah. I learn more from them than they will ever learn from me. But it's always great to to have an audience with them. Yeah, yeah you know, well, Matt. You know what? I mean, he's going to learn a lot from me then, because I'm the only licensed real estate agent on the show. Yeah, oh. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad. So. Um, for the people that don't know, obviously people may have heard or, or come across Inman News, but kind of fill people in on a little bit on your history and, and how Inman News came to be what it is now. Well, way back in the day, I was, I was an activist around the issue called redlining, if you can imagine, when banks used to redline neighborhoods and not give mortgages. And I turned it from activist to journalist, and I was a consumer writer for almost 25 years, down in your neck of the wood, San Diego Union Tribune, LA Times, San Francisco. Oh, awesome. I wrote for... And I love real estate. I always liked it. I always said we work half of our lives and we are at home the other half or somewhere in between. And home is really important to people. And I really love real estate. I love seeing real estate. I love buying real estate. prefer not to sell it. Um, I love realtors. And I teach at Cal Berkeley uh, and hang out with faculty every once in a while. If I had a choice to go to dinner with a bunch of boring UC Berkeley faculty or go out with a group of realtors, it would be a no-brainer. I'd go out with the realtors. I always love realtors. I like them in one part because I'm an entrepreneur. And... Uh, Realtors are entrepreneurs. They wake up every morning without a job. So I really love that whole aspect of them. Now, there's some rotten entrepreneurs and there's some rotten realtors, but for the most part, I love the community. And so I did that for many years, and then I started Inman News by accident. We wrote a story about a scandal at the National Association of Realtors. My editor at the San Francisco Examiner said, you know, the public doesn't really care. Uh, so we put it on the Internet in 1996, and suddenly we had all these realtors reading it, and they were really grateful there was an independent voice that wasn't paid to say things. And that's what we've been trying to do for the last 20 years is cover the industry straight up. Uh, we call it raise the real estate IQ of the industry. And uh, you know, you can't pay us for stage time. You can't pay us to be in the news. Zillow doesn't own a piece of us. I don't own a piece of Zillow. We're clean, church and state. We do our best to be really independent. And our only mission is to wake every, up every morning and provide really valuable content. To, to real estate agents that read us. And we got a ton of them reading us every day, and we're really grateful for the business. There's my, there's my nutshell. Long <laughs> <laughs> that was good. 
That was a good one. And, and any guys who have have climbed out from whatever rock you've been laying under and you don't know about him in news, go start reading it. It is one of my ultimate go-tos for all kinds of information in the real estate business. It, it is fantastic stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, so I'm I'm curious. I mean, we talked a little bit before we went on the air about uh, the fact that you you're mostly going virtual and and actually closed like one of the offices and all that good stuff. But what are some of the um, maybe just some of the practical lessons that you've learned of more on the entrepreneurial side, especially with working with virtual staff and and hiring people? I mean, you're talking about hiring writers that are all over the country working from home. I mean, there's no way to they're not coming into the office, they're not gathered around the water cooler, so you can't really provide this like a, the culture of an office. Yep. So is there any tips that you have just uh, for other entrepreneurs out there that are in similar positions I, as you? If you've got a team, um, I highly recommend Slack. Slack yep. is a simple piece of software that anyone can use that's taken off almost like Pokemon, and it's uh, really powerful, and it's collaborative. You know, it's really I am on steroids. Uh, it makes, you know, staying present all day with your team but not annoying like email. <laughs> um, taxes and it's it's really very collaborative. It's uh, very versatile. There's one that makes virtual possible. Like if I had a team of five or six realtors or four or three or two, I would get Slack right away. I just think it's you know really important, and lots of brokers and agents are using. It. Another one is Trillo, which is uh, our project management. It's just how we keep track of all the the news stories. Ooh, we lost Brad. Bye, bye, Brad. <laughs> we'll find more out about uh, about Trello here in a second. But uh, yeah, for anybody that's uh, that's watching or listening, Brad just completely dropped off. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully but, he, uh, he powered his computer up. But uh, we, yeah, why don't we why don't we do our shout outs while he's coming back on? That be that would be perfect. Okay, you want to go first? Uh, yes. So all right. So real quick, Greg's marketingexamples.com. Greg has a little video there where he explains uh, exactly what viral marketing does for him, with uh, you know helping to get repeat and referral database, uh, you know, business from his database, and then um, yeah, homing in. So uh, yeah. Hey, there we go. There you go. Well, all of a sudden we're like, and bye bye, Brad. <laughs> what the heck happened? The old trick: open the browser and they browse you in, and guess what happens? Anyway, <laughs> look on Trillo and see what we're writing about today, real quickly. Uh, you know, we're doing stuff on virtual walkthroughs. We're doing stuff on 360. We're doing on these 24/7 open houses that are being conducted by some interesting companies. Uh, but Trillo is just our project management tool. So for us as a news organization, those are just two tools that we use to operate virtually. And then you know, it's always about like team members, you know, hiring independent, responsible people that are accountable and take care of business. And if they're that, then it doesn't matter what tools you have. If they're not, tools aren't going to save uh, save you from having a disastrous partner, a disastrous mm -hmm. customer, a disastrous agent, a disastrous team member. But yeah. those are some that help it, you know, facilitate it, grease it to to make uh, virtual possible. Yeah. Well, let me yeah, ask, let me ask you, Brad, Brad, you, um, you um, we've got a little, got a little, 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 little bit of going. Hang on a second. second. That me. All right. So um, <clears throat> take us back to when you were kind of ramping up and scaling up in news to begin with before it was kind of the, the the organization that it is today when you were doing all the work yourself and then trying to figure out well how do I hire someone to do X Y and Z and how do you supervise them and how do you systematize that that's where most realtors are at is in that place or maybe they have an assistant and now they need to hire a buyer's agent or whatever what are some of the things that you learned from hiring that first one or two key people Back in the day, your first impulse was an administrator, assistant, right, or the old days a secretary. Remember that term? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. That sounds very racist to me. And sexist. 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 But anyway, the, 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 the idea then is you had a certain amount of administrative work that you had to take care of, and your time was valuable as a principal strategist, negotiator, and in terms of real estate sales, and why waste your time on pushing paper? And so your first hire was always that. I don't think that is relevant anymore. I think Mm. Now, all the virtual tools we have, whether it's sophisticated CRM or drip marketing or all kinds of, and I'm not a fan necessarily of that, but the point is there's a bunch of great stuff that you can do to, to do that. So your first hire might actually be some of equal to you, and, or your first hire, and I know in the startup land, it's hiring, like, if I'm not good at finance, hiring someone that's good at finance, to me, numbers, technology, and strategy. It doesn't get much more basic than that. And then sales is the next one, but you've got to start with those. And so find someone of equal as opposed to looking down about I'm great and I'm going to hire all these underlings under me. That's an old concept. And now if you look at startups, it's like some really cool strategist startup guy who's got a big picture. He may be a sales-driven guy. And then he hires a really smart, savvy software engineer. 
And so it's of equals, you know, meaning both skills are necessary. And I think increasingly in real estate, you know, the level of sophistication of the consumer is kind of overpowering too many agents. So they're kind of going back to old school pyramid sort of hiring structures. Hire a secretary. It's just a modified secretary, right? I don't want to do the administrative stuff. Instead, you know, use DocuSign. Use everything that you can so you don't need to hire someone that's not of equal and then hire someone equal that completely complements and revolutionizes your business. Now, is that work today? Is that a waste of money? It could be, but around the bend, it's going to be critical. Well, I think I, I think you're really on more about this than I. I think you're really onto something, Brad. And the fact is that we're seeing that the, the the team structure are, are, are morphing significantly. It used to be the team leader, and then you know the whole pyramid side. We're seeing a lot of people now. At least I am in my where where I'm working in the East Bay, is that the teams will hire a listing side, a buyer's side, and then the, the people work off the jobs that they like. Like our team, we have a team manager, Eileen, and she's exceptionally good at what she does. And then each of the rest of us have our little niches that we're really good at, and we feed off of each other, and we come together as a whole and benefit each other. It's not dictator, you know, telling, hey, go do this, go do that. It's all learning from each other. And it's true. The consumer has so much knowledge these days. So much knowledge. Yeah. I mean, they they've been they've been stalking a neighborhood and a house for months, yeah. and they know every single thing about it. So yeah, you you got to defer you know to experts in in all different realms. And it's also it's like you two guys being in the air. Two's better than one, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I always said in the startup land, one VC said to me one time, uh, try to get five smart people around the table. Yeah, Four will do. Uh, Three is almost there. Two's not enough, and one you're dangerous. You can't <laughs> through this tough stuff by yourself. Just think of all the things that have to be figured out. Just a day-to-day -day gnarly transaction. I guess that's why the broker's there, etc. But let's look further out. You know, how do we make Q3 and Q4? It's better just to have another smart person sitting around the table with you figuring that out. And yeah. whatever their skill set, just a higher level of intelligence, and better yet, hire someone smarter than. You. Yeah. Uh, and better than you, and then you'll kill it. Yeah. Well, let's let's go deeper into that a little bit. So, and and compare maybe the startup land with with what you know of real estate teams and things like that. I think people look at uh, the potential of partnering up with somebody in real estate, and they and they look for someone. Unfortunately, they don't take that approach of looking for someone that fills in their their weaknesses. They look for someone that complements them and they enjoy being around. And a lot of times, that ends up being people that are probably too much alike to be a good partnership. Yeah. But I mean, in in the startup land, there's there's kind of a um, there's there's a common I guess a language and a set of expectations in terms of you know am I an employee of you are we partners and then how if we're our partners how that is split up and what the expectations are and all that stuff is negotiable but at least there's some track record uh, that people can kind of pull from and yep. real estate is kind of the wild wild west so there's um, teams have just only come up in the last ten years yep. is there anything interesting that you're seeing people out there doing or what if you were a solo agent and you want to bring somebody in how would you go approach that in terms of, do I bring them in as a partner, and if so, do I do I have to give up half of the equity, or can there be some other arrangements that you've seen that are working? Well, you know, realtors wake every up every morning without uh, a job, but they also wake up every morning without asset value. So I think it's really important realtors start to think about creating asset value. I mean, it's a shame you work your whole life, you're a top producer, you make a good living. Hopefully, you stuffed away some change so when Brexit and anything else, you know. <laughs> blows up compared to the next downturn, but, but if you're not because you bought three new cars, then and I'm a big conservative guy when it comes to managing money, but but then you have no asset value and you still don't have a job, and that's the worst place to be. You know, at least corporate investors and wrestlers they have a job even though they have no equity. So I think what's really important is to figure out asset value, and then you start thinking about structuring a company. We create more owners than employees. Owners just tend to be more responsible. Does that mean 50-50? There's so many bad examples of partners, friends particularly, going out and splitting a company 50-50. A good friend of mine is Craig Newmark of Craigslist. You know, he gave away 25% very early on to an engineer of, of, of Craigslist, and it was quite a mess. You know, eBay bought it out from under him that 25%. It created all kinds of complexities and problems. And we know many, many people in business, and I've done it. But I'll never forget many years ago when I used to offer, you know, one, two, three, four percent of my company to do marketing, do this, do that. Um, my partner, who was my ex-wife, who was my dear friend Chris, she said to me, you know, you've given away, if I'd let you, 120 percent of the company. So there's two extremes here. Most people partners that deserve it and are going to treat it like an ownership, 
but don't do it carelessly uh, just to get you know free work and free labor. That's not the proper way to do it. It will come back to bite you. The great thing about Startup Land is you're right. They have figured out, we figured out through venture capital and structure and trial and error, trial and error, lots of mistakes, lots of failures, yeah. that there is a sensible, logical way to give away equity. And it doesn't take that much for people to feel like a sense of ownership. I think Keller Williams and Gary, you know, Gary Keller figured this out. You know, he didn't have to give away half of it, but he gave away enough that people got meaningful, even small checks. You know, I was in the ebook business for years, and you know, when writers just get that check every month, it means something, however big or small it is. But I, I don't really know what works exactly for teams. I don't pretend to be an expert on that. But I think ownership goes a long way anytime we give it up to people who deserve it and act like owners and yeah. people that are not problematic and people that aren't going to cause issues later. Um, it's like any partnership. You don't want it to blow up later because a person's unstable. Right. And you guys have to get to put the right people in the right seats on the bus. You got it. You, be, know. you just nailed it. You said it in five words. I said it in like 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> Two different personality types now appreciate both of us. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've hit the entire spectrum. I can have you write all my headlines at MN News. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that's uh, that's interesting, it's been interesting to watch, is there's, um, I don't know if you're aware of the book, Brad, it's, um, what is it, Traction by Gino Wickman. Yes. Have you see, yeah, so that's that's kind of taken hold a little bit. And I know Lars Hedenberg teaches it in his uh, his group coaching. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of those guys are adopting that model where you've got the visionary and then say, you know almost equal to them is that implementer role yep. as opposed to a pyramid style. You have people that are more, and sometimes it's a husband-wife team, which is pretty logical. But uh, there's a pretty, some other examples of where it's just another person that they brought in and partnered up. So you've got the high D, high I team leader, and then you've got the high SC kind of engineering mindset. And that would be kind of in the startup land. You've got, I'm sure, a lot of those cases where you have the engineering and the software development experience with the visionary uh, who's kind of running things. But it's more of a partnership as opposed to a hierarchy. If yeah, that makes and, sense. And, and I think you nailed it, what we used to call in the world an operator. You know, then the next one is an operator. So you got the visionary and you got the tactical engineering mindset. But who's the operator? You get to a level that you want to scale, because that's what all these businesses are about, right? I mean, Chris used to say to me, she said, we want to never get big enough that we have to deal with people we don't like, which was great for a quality of life business. It put our kids through good colleges and helped us buy real estate in the Bay, and we lived a good quality of life. But if the other businesses I've been involved with since and now in me, because it's grown crazily, it, it wasn't about that. It wasn't about only working with people you like. It wasn't about only the quality of life. It was about growing a big business. If that's your ambition. And there's a point when the business has to scale. And this is where technology is crucial. You need to adopt every piece of the puzzle quickly, and some of it won't work. And you have to have someone to help you on the operational side. Because if you don't have a scalable system, you will continue to have a great quality of life business, but you won't build a big asset and a big business. And those are a whole new level of challenges once you get over that hump of you know a couple million in revenue, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. But if you want to get big, if that's your ambition, I think a lot of people do, then it's it's ops 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 and efficiency and scalability. Yeah. yeah, it's totally true. You know, Matt and I, Matt, we've talked about this before. Matt, when we first started getting into this you know, podcasting thing, you know, I'm definitely on more on the visionary side of like big picture. Matt's like, no, 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 I'm gonna grab you and bring you back down to earth, McDaniel. And I'm like, no, 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 we can get, we can go to this levels, so we can go to that that high, and then we've morphed into that role like you, we complement each other extremely well I shoot for the moon and then Mars and Matt's like let's just get let's just get to the next state okay um, <laughs> well, the, yeah. well on everything yeah you know, and and I think that there's a there's a point there about visionaries I think the best the best visionaries are the guys that have enough technical knowledge to at least keep their expectations rooted in reality right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. yeah. yeah. You know, right, so um, way, so let's your, your podcast, Thinking Bigger. You should we should get it on Inman right away. So let's do that. You, we give yeah. you distribution and more customers and more readers. They'd love it. You guys are really smart. This is it would really be good to have you there. And then you can interview more practical people than Brad Inman. But it would be really <laughs> super to have you. We could help you there. It's a no-brainer deal. I'll make it happen afterwards. Oh, Sweet. Great. We'd be honored, man. And and by the way, uh, more practical than you. No, you're pretty damn practical. Okay. I mean, you you you've been around. You've done a lot of stuff that nobody else in this industry even thinks about. We we were talking about a certain subject matter about a deal that you're going through, and it's funny that you're experiencing something that you've talked about in the past. So it's it's cool to like watch people like you that have had real world experience on multiple different levels in different industries. But then you you get go through a certain circumstances, and you're like, huh, hmm. 
interesting. It's exactly how I thought it was going to play out, but I thought it was going to be a different outcome, you know, ultimately. Yeah. You know? yeah Brad, did you want to talk about that, the current real estate deal yeah. you're in? Yeah. Well, it's, it, let's just call it it's happened, whatever. I, I'm a big advocate of representation on both sides. I'm not, I'm not really into coming soon. I'm an old-fashioned consumer writer, you know? Um, and so coming soon scares me because the seller may not be getting maximum exposure for the pure intent of someone double-setting a transaction. Mm -hmm. For those out there that think I'm crazy, I'm sorry. It's just how I look at the world. It's like my dad taught me business, which have more checks in this hand, Bradley, than bills in this hand. It's simple. My brain is just, I'm not that smart. I'm a pretty simple guy. And so more checks than bills, and then you'll stay in business. Similarly, uh, there's a reason for broker cooperation. There's a reason to have two sides. There's a reason for representation. That's why the dual agency law is so complicated. And it's it's complicated. So I've been a critic of that. I've been a critic of any kind of coming soon that means it's not on the MLS for everybody to see. Dolly Lenz, my friend in New York, top, top producer, she says, hey, Brett, I want to put it everywhere because I want to know what the real price of the, of the house is. I don't want to have a few experts like myself figuring it out. Anyway, preach, preach, preach. Uh, so I went out and I decided... <laughs> to try it the new way and it just you know nothing against any parties involved I just you know getting into it now I realize you know it's probably better to have the old-fashioned way you know have have someone represent the buyer and someone represent the seller and, and it just seems cleaner and easier I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want any way this to be any criticism but um, it just it, it just suddenly talking to the same person on both sides is exactly what it is. You know? It's whatever the rules and laws are, we're human beings and it's complicated. And yeah, but you know what? Everybody's got to experience it at some point in their life. Then they go back and they're like, well, I, I know that outcome. I'll move forward. And that's, you yeah, know. We'll, it's, it. we'll get at the house, I think, I hope. Uh, yeah. But, you know, so it's not that big a deal. I just, there's always lessons. I find my lessons walking down the street, not reading some self help bullshit book. I'm not a big fan of all that. <laughs> There's so much to learn talking to people. There's so much to learn, you know, um, it, it, and that's how I learned. And so I learned a lot in the last, uh, last couple of years. It sounds, Greg, it sounds like when I asked Jay Samet how, <laughs> like, what, what he keeps up on to know, like, what's going on yeah. with, with stuff and technology. He's like, I hang out with the people that are doing it. Yeah, <laughs> I hang out with the super smart people. Yeah, it's like, I like, well, I'm going to meet Peter Diamandis next week or whatever. I'm like, well, that's, that's a little bit better than reading his blog, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, and you know, I always say, and hang with the winners, not the whiners. You're not going. Yes. You might find some comfort in hanging around with the whiners, but hang around with the winners. I tell my team that. I tell people in real estate, you know, the winners. And you know who? There's an agent. Um, God, I'm spacing on a name from New Jersey who once said to me, "You know, you get all these superstar, rock star, best and brightest. You say come to your conferences, Brad. You got some people that can tweet well, but cannot sell real estate." And I don't know why you don't have more of them on the stage. And it was a wake-up call about five years ago. So we really said, no, 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 no. We want successful people on the stage. If they can tweet, great. But they're not. that's not a qualification to tell other realtors how to do their job if they're not successful. And don't misunderstand me. Success is defined in a lot of different ways. Yeah. But success should be part of it. Those are the people we should – I mean, you want to learn something. Learn from people that do it well. Yeah, and, and that are currently doing it, like yeah. boots on yeah. ground in the trenches. Yeah, at, at, you know, at, they're 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 trying it, they're testing it, like A B testing the real world stuff. Yeah, you know that's what I believe in. That's the that's that's the cool stuff. And I think because of publications, not like old guys. Right? Is that what you mean? <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, you know the the publication that like you have and the other information aggregators that are out there. There are so many brilliant people that are bringing forth current information that they there isn't that that wall that that, that barrier anymore to all the knowledge out there. No, there so, isn't. That's why consumers are getting smart. Mm -hmm. you know, they're getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Yeah. We gotta we gotta curtail that because we have to control well, the power. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, let's let's dive into that a little bit. So, I mean, what what are what are what are some of the effects that you've seen on agents of consumers all of a sudden having the upper hand in terms of they don't need you for information? It's, it, the landscape is completely shifting. They're, they're a lot of times coming to the transaction more informed about the specific area that they want to be in, the neighborhood, the types of homes, whatever, oftentimes than the agent they're working with is, unfortunately. Um, I mean, what are some of the things that you've observed, and, and how can well, they adjust? How can we adjust? On information, I don't know if it's temporary or not. It could be with robotics. That's something I'm obsessed by these days, and what machines can do with information. Because, you know, the human brain is really remarkable. I saw something today in the gym. I know it doesn't look like a gym, but I go there every once in a while, and uh, 
I saw this little thing, you know, they, they shot up, and it said only two to three percent of your body body fat is in your head, but it requires uh, it takes twenty percent of the oxygen, and that's because this is one powerful thing called the human brain. But one thing we're really bad about we have to cool it off. It's so hot, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, with more oxygen. But one thing uh, we've learned is machines are much better at information processing. They're just smarter. You know, if I ask you to multiply 1,233,612 by 1,522, you guys would, you know, pull out your calculator and maybe in 20 seconds get the answer. But if I'll I get back to you next week. Yeah, right. If I ask Siri or if I ask Alexa, my Amazon robot, they would tell me in one second. Um, so information processing. So you might think, wow, look at Zillow estimates. You know, just first cut of what the next generation is going to be more and more sophisticated, more and more sophisticated. You look at all the other information out there. You might say that realtors aren't, you know, necessary in the whole valuation front and and the market. But see, I think that's wrong. What I think the fact is, market information is very nuanced, house to house, street to street. We just launched a big thing with Weiss Analytics, who does street by street, house by house, historic analytics, getting there closer. But it's a tool for agents. Now, what's that about? So I'll just use my current example, or a few examples the last two years. Um, I found a, an agent randomly on the street, believe it or not, Brad Inman, always telling people to do diligence. I literally was looking at a sign in front of a house, and a woman walked by and a dog. Sure enough, she's a realtor. She pitches me. We use her. She's a sweetheart, but didn't really know the market very well. And uh, then I had a realtor that knew every block, every street, uh, every house, every condo in every building, person knew the whole neighborhood, like the back of their hand. The pressure on agents to have that kind of insight into buildings and history and comps and is so important. So, so, so important. It's not just, okay, what's for sale? What's going to be for sale? And how much should I list it for? That is really stupid. If that's the extent of your knowledge about your market area, you're stupid. And consumers are smarter than that. They can look at all the houses. So. In this interim, before the robot tells us that everything's worth instantly, that information, and that takes, that takes going back to school, that takes education, that takes curiosity about every building and the architects and who built it and when and what's the history, who bought it and why. I can't stand it when I ask a realtor, well, what's the history on this house? What do they sell? Well, I don't really know. They don't want to tell us anything because they're worried about contingent liability. That's why I want you. I want you to fill me in on all the details and all the history and interpret it for me and tell me why this estimate's wrong and be sophisticated. Don't say Zillow's stupid. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I want a sophisticated answer to my question because I, as a consumer today, are much more sophisticated than I used to be. Does that make sense? Oh, 100%. I mean, you nailed it right oh, on the head. 090046 better than me or I don't need you. No, you're 100% you're right. One of my favorite a a sites out there is called Neighborhood Scout. Um, yeah. You can go super deep on hyper-local neighborhoods and specifics yeah. about percentages and ethnicities and languages and people and everything else and the real estate market. Um, but you, are you now did, did I misunderstand you, Brad? Did you say that you guys are coming out with something that's going to have all this past history? Yeah. You know, we have Select, which is our Inman memberships. We have hundreds of thousands of members and we're so grateful to all of them and they can now get this market information that you know, I've been writing about studying uh, economic data and market data. It's just something I'm obsessed with. It was what my original sort of training was. And uh, this is the first index I've ever seen. It's house by house, street by street, historic. And it's coming out. It's kind of it's beta tested right now on the site and where people can, um, you know, get that kind of local information. I cannot wait to see that. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I think I none of it's perfect, but it's a tool where you can say, you know, here's 90046, here's 7700, you know, Waring Avenue, here's what's gone on from 2002 to 2016, here's a realistic forecast of next year, here's what's happening to your house, here's what's happening to the houses next, and it's heat maps, and it's just, it's really comprehensive. I'm a real big fan of it. But again, I think people just have to go, go, to school, go back to school on some of this stuff. Yeah, they have to be constantly in a state of curiosity. You mentioned that earlier. You have to be a student of the industry. You have to yeah. got to be learning, reading, listening, networking around with smart people. Otherwise, you're going to be left in the dust, and someone else is going to be better suited to represent the buyer or the seller because they know the trends, they know what to be looking for, they see the future of it, they see the writing on the wall. I mean, I'm advocate on that. I'm always I joke around all the time, but like if you see me with these earbuds in yeah. and I have my phone near me, it's not music. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a book on tape. It's going to be something from Audible on one of their channels. It's going to be something that I get better on. 
Exactly. Are you just re-listening to your podcast? So it's, it's so oh, I just lull myself to sleep with my own voice. <laughs> well, hi there. <laughs> Okay. There's only there's only a fair I would say fair to middling in in, in the the listening to your own podcast department. <laughs> <coughs> That's funny. All right. So any anything else uh, anything else that you see coming down well, coming down the pipe? Information. But then let's say I ask someone about schools and they say, oh, they're really good or uh, they're better here than they are. You know, rattle off the name of every single school and their test scores. You know, just have it know it and memorize it by your zip code. Uh, make sure then you also say, hey, I'm going to walk you through I'm going to make this transaction easier for you. And I'm also going to walk through why there's certain things we can't make easy. So let me tell you, I'm going to use DocuSign, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use that, I'm going to do this and that, da la la la. Every electronic version of everything to make your life easier because my job here is to make your life easier. If I was greeted like that, which is how I'm greeted in the morning when I turn on my, my Mac, which is basically telling me I'm here to make your life easier, or, you know, Alexis, my robot, make, I'm here to make your life easier. That's their mentality. So. Compete with the machine on the machine's abilities. Try to have nuanced, better, sophistication, understanding the information. Have it at the tip of your, uh, the tip of your tongue, and then also make it easy as hell as you can possibly by investing in the technology that makes it easier for the consumer. Um, you know, I think real estate. Too, I love sales. I hire commission salespeople to sell property, and I'm a believer in that. But I also think too often we're too focused on what makes it easier for us, not the consumer. And then we think our only value is showing them how hard it is. And uh, I wouldn't be valuable unless I could navigate all this paperwork. Well, that's a really that's like an old mic, uh, Microsoft, you know, computer from the dark ages, telling people that this is going to make your life easier when it doesn't at all. Yeah, no, you you and I are, are on the same uh, mind point there, Brad. And the fact that I, people always ask me, Greg, how do you close a deal? And I'm like, you don't close a deal. You open with value. You yeah. open with I call it the value add rocket ship. I, I mean, love. And because at the end of it, like you know, if I bring enough value to your life, you're not going. I'm not going to you. So, Brad, uh, you want to move forward on this transaction, buddy? You're you're going. Hey, Greg, what's the next steps? When do I get the contract? How hard do I need to press? How many copies are here? Yeah. Exactly. And people just do it backwards. I couldn't agree more. Well, it's it's interesting. I I don't know. See if you agree with this hypothesis. I'll float out there. But just from my experience in in other industries, I mean, I can see something like. The, the revolution that's undergone in like the financial advisor space with the shift to registered investment advisors or fee-based financial planning. I mean, do you see something like that model developing in real estate? Well, you know, one of my favorite realtors in the world is Dolly Lenz, and it's because she has a new level of sophistication, and part of it is the sophistication of her clients. When you're selling the Murdoch, Uber Murdoch family estate, Leo DiCaprio and all these other people and all these Wall Street people, you gotta, you gotta reach a certain level. So I think she's the level we should all achieve. And she says certain things that just make sense. You know, I don't do, you know, um, what do you call it, listing soon, whatever, because she wants to know the true market value of the house by getting it all the way out there. So the marketplace that we created through the in-laws, which is so wonderful, really begins to, to, to tell us. And she says things like that. She also says we have a fiduciary duty to our clients. She's not afraid to do that. We have too many realtors now that are reading all the literature and want no contingent liability, and they tell you nothing, and they say nothing, and they give you no advice, and you go, if I had to, every time I printed a, a thing in the news, if I asked first, what's my contingent liability, it's like an insurance company, instead of saying, what do I need to give my readers that's important to them, and then make sure it's not libelous and slander so I don't get sued, but that's not the first question. A lot of realtors have done this double speak because they're worried about contingent litigation and tell you nothing. Dolly says it's my duty to get in there and mix it up with you and try to help you sort out the fiduciary implications of your investment and what you're doing. And that can't be mixed perilously with sales. Now Dolly is one hell of a salesperson, but she's very savvy about that duty and that responsibility. I think it should be in law, um, but it's not. And uh, oh, it's how so? Because of NAR. Well. Your fiduciary duty to your client is not actually written into very few state laws about your obligation as a realtor as an intermediary. Um, I think it should be explicit. Even the stock brokerage community has it, but not to the degree they should have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're advising people on these big million dollar investments. You know, you have a duty, and I think it's practical. It's getting back to my dad, checks and bills. It's like, you, you're telling these people what to do with all this money. You should be obligated by law to. But exhibiting that is how you should behave. I think you, you should be. And then I leave a transaction and go, that person was really out to help me not lose money. 
Mm -hmm. Imagine that. A real estate yeah. agent do that. <laughs> yeah, and then you know what? I'll refer them until I'm crazy. This person feels a sense of duty towards you. They're not just selling you Shinola. Yeah, you know, I, you know I've actually walked away, Bob, uh, Brad, Bob here in the office, um, from a um, from deals. Um, and when a client goes, well, Greg, I want to I want to offer on this home, and I say, well, let's look at what's going on here, all right? And they and if they persist, and I say, if you guys persist with this home and going to buy it, I will not represent your interests. This is a bad buy. And people stop in their tracks, Brad, when I, I tell them that. And they're like, you really won't? You really won't sell us this home? I'm like, I will not be representing you because I want to, when I see you in Safeway, I want you to hug me, not throw a tomato at me. I think that's great. Right. And you get more business out of it. People got to think long term. Yeah, it's a long, as my dad would say, it's a long tail play. You know, okay. the people you meet today are the people you do business with tomorrow. End of story. And, you know, part of that is, uh, is when you think long term, you, you, you're going to, there's payday for you. There's always going to be yeah, one thing that uh, I don't remember who said it—if it was Jeff Cohn or I don't know somebody else that I was that we were interviewing on the show—but <clears throat> I think he said something to the effect of, you know, when he would reach out to his his sphere and prospective clients, the goal was never to get that person as a client; it was to get that person to refer him yeah. to other people. Yeah, great. And as a byproduct of that mentality, he treated them in such a way that it naturally led to sales. But his goal of reaching out was actually to train them to send him business. And in the process, that that created uh, the sense that he actually, you know, had their best interest in mind and wasn't. Uh, and, and that goes back to like an, an having an abundance mentality, right? You know, there's there's always more clients, there's always more customers, there's always more people to work with. You yeah. don't need to hold on to this one person to the point where you give them bad advice. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's a whole a whole different mentality. But I want to make sure that we get a chance to talk about the next uh, the next Connect event, and then maybe we'll get into kind of what you're you know talk about having a long term plan. I'd love to hear kind of your vision for where Inman is going and what some of the next steps are. But let's talk about the the upcoming Connect event first and some of the cool things you're doing. Yeah, first week in August, August second to August fifth to that incredible city, San Francisco. We have we'll have four thousand people coming from all over the world. Um, you know. A delegation would come from, you know, Brazil and France and Singapore and Shanghai. I joke with my friends in San Francisco, realtors and brokers. You know, people are taking 22-hour flights to come to San Francisco for this, uh, you know, this group of 4,000 best and the brightest, and you can't take a 20-minute subway ride. <laughs> but, uh, the, the point is, and we have such a great California contingent, and people do actually come out to meet three Californians because. California is this wonderful place that does so many innovative things to this day. Um, and we're, it's full of content. It's 200 speakers. There's 75 sessions, if you can imagine. I'm a big believer in content. You can pick and choose. But there's also literally hundreds of hours of networking. 30% uh, of our audience is now agents. And, dang, this is a $900 ticket. Why would someone pay $900 an agent? People kid that agents don't like to pay for anything. Well, it's become a networking referral opportunity. Um, Gary Gold, who's a top producer in Beverly Hills, just told me the story of, of how he got a listing, a big ass listing, uh, in Southern California as a result of coming to Connect. I don't want to overplay it. You may come August 2nd and not get a referral, but my point is there's really good, good agents from around the world. You get to know them, and um, so it's it's really cool. We've got a really a lot of good speakers. We've got Gary V coming. We've got Robert Thompson, the CEO of News Corp. And, we got, you know, throughout the range of issues, we got big picture what's around the bend with robots, and then we've got practical how to use Facebook ads. Uh, Facebook's a big partner in helping us because that's grown so so much. All the tech guys are there. A lot of brokers, indie brokers, this is a place they come. Teams are coming now more and more. Um, and we're just devoted. And, and one thing I always say, we're not a corporate event. You know, it's a content concert, not a corporate conference. And we're totally focused on the person uh, who, low, you know, flew a plane or flew from Omaha, paid a thousand dollars, paid a thousand to travel. It's not about the speakers. It's not about their egos. It's not about being politically correct. It's all about the audience. It's all about giving them lots and lots of value. And um, you know, it's just fun. It's just a great few days. And it's very diverse. It's a very skews younger now, aspirational, but also highly, you know, really successful younger brokers and teams. Um, big thrust on technology. Some of it's useless, some of it's cool, some of it you'll never see again. And some of it's <laughs> but uh, we're really open about that, and we say it's all here. 
to take advantage of. We open every event by saying who used their personal credit card to pay for the registration fee. And there's only two groups that do that, agents and entrepreneurs. And that's really our core audience. We really, we really have great respect for people that parted with their wallet to come see us. And we want to make sure they leave feeling really good about it. Yeah, and that's not a joke. Any of you guys um, have never been to it, I highly recommend you guys attending this event. It is truly one of those things when you'll walk out of there, your brain's going to be hurting, um, but you're going to have a lot of business cards in your pocket of people that you have met, and they're just really cool people, and they're looking to do the same thing you're looking to do is expand your biz their business and, you and your business. And you to, guess what? You get to make a friend. Imagine that. Make an agent friend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we might flattered when I go around these indie brokers. They started out by coming to Connect, and they built their business around the ideas they heard. There, and, and they're not from me; they're from all the great speakers that we were able to tap. And you know, being in the Silicon Valley and then in New York, you know, there's a great group of people. Not everything's thought up in San Francisco and New York. We get kind of arrogant, um, but the point is, you know, you get people get to see all these folks they wouldn't ordinarily get to see, maybe. In Omaha. And Omaha is a great place. That is. It's my hometown, actually. <laughs> I, I thought you knew that, Brad. I'm like, how did he pick Omaha? I know, it's random that he picked Omaha. It's funny. <laughs> I was pandering completely. You didn't know that. I do. <laughs> I also know about your time in jail. No. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, so I got, I got one question. Yeah. I know you're probably going there, Matt, but I am dying to know more about the tech. I mean, I love a lot of the tech tools that we're coming out right now. Brad, what, what is on the market right now? What are a couple of the most influential tech tools that you're seeing agents use successfully in today's business for either little or no money? Because this is all going out to the, the agents who are just starting or who have no capital or have decided never to not to work for the last 360 days out of 365 and they finally want to get back into the business. You know, those kind of folks. Well, anything in the cloud, everything you can put in the cloud. You know, I think you guys know that, but CRM in the cloud, you know, information in the cloud, uh, you know, in the cloud is 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 simple things. You know, don't overcomplicate it. But it's just budget storing and organizing your information. You know, all the new contact management, all of that stuff being in the cloud. I know that sounds simple, but you said get simple. That that's just one broad thing that that I think people do. You know, there's new project management. There's new ways to communicate. Yeah. There's new messaging platforms. You know, people are leveraging, like I, I use Slack, but they're also leveraging Facebook for those internal communications. Uh, and then I think, you know, some of the more far-fetched stuff, but it's going to happen. You know, some of the, you know, the instant showing experimentations going on. Some of the people that are doing data and metrics, there's a lot of sophisticated tools now to use your own data and other people's data. Um, you know, and just everything that powers yourself, you know, your, your, your mobile device. Um, you know, there's just a bunch of stuff in there. We have a whole session on 50 apps that will make your business more successful at Connect. I can't list them all, but right. you know, those that have been tried and tested by brokers and agents. And by the way, we're big fans of not having technologists up there spitting out and spewing their BS. It's about brokers and agents that are using the technology to explain that. And um, I can give you a very good list. I feel like I failed it. Well, you, what you touched on there a little while ago, and it kind of sparked back in my mind when you, right when you were talking here, is that you you and Facebook have partnered up. You guys, you know, big proponent of each one of them. I use the Facebook Messenger all the time because I can do 15-second videos, one-minute audios, or I can type something. In a great month. I love that thing. Platform. This isn't, you know, this this messaging platform stuff is going to explode, and it's going to really explode in real estate for collaboration with clients, for collaboration. Uh, and don't think of it as sharing your stuff and liking, disliking. Think of it as, which they become, platforms for collaboration and communication. And that's just, you know, Facebook's going to announce a bunch of stuff for real estate at our conference, and a lot of it is around the messaging platform and data and analytics because, and you know, here's one example. Zillow has a bunch of data you can tap. So does Realtor.com. You, you contribute. Everyone says, they take our data. Well, actually, they have some really good consumer data. If you just call up, and I'll give you the number of an executive, you know, Email Greg Schwartz. Let me get his damn phone number here. This uh, guy's going to get so many phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for Greg Schwartz. <laughs> I know he's actually in Rome right now, so he won't answer. But give him a week to get back. It's GregS at Zillow.com and say, Brad Inman said in a podcast that you have data around consumers that might help me do my job. And and if he gives you any you know grief, let me know. But <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, Realtor.com has data. Um, and this is data you can use. There's market data. This, you know, I mentioned, and I don't want to pitch our stuff only, but there's a lot of good free market data. You know, here, here's one. NAR, RPR, is, they spent a fortune on this thing through your tax on you as dues-paying members of the National Association of Realtors. They have free market data. They have free data, data, data. Figure out how to get to RPR. Let's find his number. 
Dale Roth, I think is his number. He's head of RPR and tell him, or here's Dale Stinton. He is he is the CEO of, of the NAR, D Stinton, S T I N T O N it Stinton, S T I N T O N at Realtors.org and say, Dear Dale, Brad Inman said that you have free data through RPR. How do I get my hands on it? And and uh, who's the other guy? Um, my point in this you the, the industry pays taxes to all these groups, right? Mm -hmm. you, you pay Zillow, you give them your data, you pay them maybe for leads, you pay NAR through your dues, and they have a bunch of stuff that no one uses and no one even knows they have. And uh, we try to get that out through Inman, but there's a lot of free stuff that you're already paying for. You might as well get it. I think you're taxed $27 a, a year for RPR, and they spend hundreds, I think $100 million. So, you know, go put that to use. And by the way, NAR, I get along with them. I'm just... I'm, I represent the realtors. I don't represent the fat cats. So that's and what I said. You're 100 percent right on on all the free stuff out there. People do bash on a lot of these big corporations, but if you go back into the resources, if you go back into their academies or whatever else, there's some amazing content that you can re, you know regurgitate back out or put into your business on a daily basis that will make you more intelligent in a very short amount of reading. So yeah, here's more technology. Just go to the Inman archives. You know, and look up videos. There's training videos. There's free. They're all free, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting there, like pick one, listen to it, do it while you're in your car. You know, there's podcasts. There's articles. There's you know, there's just a ton of free stuff there for realtors. And that, there's a ton of free stuff for consumers, and there's a ton of free stuff for realtors that the realtors don't use, and they should. Be. They should be, but we got to keep in mind that realtors are realtors, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not going to do any work yeah. to get data that they have to read. They want it to just be given to them, you know? Right. <laughs> but it's tough. As you know, they have to make a living. They have to sell a house, you know? Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. That's why I laugh at myself all the time, you know? But I also then do go hunt but down. But you're making data. an effort, yes. But it's yeah. like, uh, who is it, David Maester said that your your skills and knowledge are like any asset, they depreciate over time and probably more rapidly than you think. Exactly. And uh, I mean, we all, you know, no matter what industry you're in, if you're in, you know, the marketing and consulting end like I am, or if you're an active agent like Greg is, I mean, whatever our skills are, they all kind of, you know, we, we can ride off of them, off of our existing skill set for a while, a couple years, basically yeah. at this point, the way things change. And then the whole thing, you know, we have to keep up, we have to keep educated and, and keep learning and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the most difficult things that people that are probably coming from an older generation have is there is the idea that, well, if, you just, if I can just get into the right career, I learn something once, and then I can just spend the next 30 years working off of that knowledge. And I don't think it's really ever been like that, but it's, uh, there's definitely the perception that if you got into the right career, it was like that. You learn a skill set, and then you execute that skill set for the next 30 years, and then you retire. And uh, the world is not, does not allow you and actively punishes you if you have that mentality now. <laughs> well, the good news is we can change, you know. Um, that's one thing that I don't think people realize. The human brain changes every day, every moment, and you can change what, you know, there's a, there's a, I don't know if you heard of the marshmallow test where this Harvard uh, professor years ago, he, he, would, he did this test with young kids like five years old. He'd say, here, mm -hmm. take this marshmallow oh, yeah. and you can eat it. And then right before the kid eats it, he stops and says, hey, two minutes, I'll give you two marshmallows. And half the kids ate it right away and the other half waited. And he concluded, actually people concluded what he concluded was that you are two type, there are two types of people. There are people that need instant gratification and there's others that will wait. Kind of like uh, you know, the waiting for that second referral. And, but he's now kind of modified and said, no, you weren't really listening or reading what I said. He said, the kid, you can take the kid that wants to eat it right now and you can change his behavior. You say to him, imagine that that's not really a marshmallow. This is just one trick he had. And then if you imagine it not being a marshmallow, you won't want to eat it. And now wait, and you might get two real marshmallows. And it modified behavior. The reason I like that example is we think we can't change. We think we can't read the software. You don't need to read software anymore, but you don't want to take the time to figure out Slack. Or, you know, it pushes you out of the system. Or, you know, you don't want to change how you approach it or you don't want to partner the right way, you don't do due diligence, you can change. The human brain is amazing. It can change, and uh, you can change it. You can just willfully change how you do things, period. Are we out of time? I, I think we're, uh, we're, we're coming up on it, yeah. 
You didn't you didn't doubt me at 20 minutes, so I guess I passed one test. <laughs> no, it was great. No, first of all, that's uh, that's phenomenal. I mean, that's it's it's true, and I think people need to understand that at a deeper level, and then they would realize that uh, it's it's really it's getting over that hump of okay, I'm going to expend some mental effort that might be uh, uncomfortable at first for the first few minutes and yeah. maybe it's maybe at first it's uncomfortable for every minute that you spend in it but the longer that you the more you do that and the more you get used to that level of mental effort the easier it gets and the more naturally it comes uh, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle of learning it's like what Greg talked about earlier if you, if you live that lifestyle it gets a little bit easier exactly and then the reward is it works and you go wow what am I messaging yeah. Giving this thing, the robot versus the brain. I'll just tell you this story. So about six weeks ago, my granddaughter was born. I was waiting in the hospital, and I was reading all about robots because I'm obsessed with it. And I was coming to that point where I was reading a lot of Silicon Valley BS that robots were operating like brains and they were going to take over and everything. And then my son-in-law calls me, and I go in, and there's my little girl. And you know, half an hour later, they hand me to her, and she stretches. And and uh, humans have incredible no one's going to take our business away from us. There's no robot that's going to replace the realtor. But the robot, the, the, the realtor that doesn't start using all this technology will be impaired. They will be much more helpless than their competitors because robots, machines, technology, it's what's, there's something called singularity, which people are afraid of, where robots and humans come together. And it is happening, whether we like it or not. It's happening with our iPhone. Just look what you do with it, how we talk and communicate. But the point is, if you use all those robotics, you're just going to kick the shit out of your competitors. That's <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's so true. I can kill you, robots, but if you don't, yeah. you're going to be dead. Yeah, and going back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago is the fact that, like, since I have dyslexia, me reading is is a more is a little bit on the more difficult side and not so much fun. But if I wanted to get better, like we talked about in the beginning of the podcast, you know, I had to go through those uncomfortable, unfun parts and actually sit down and read the book or read the article, which a lot of them came from your site. And then what I did is I put them in this huge file. Yeah. And I go back and, and reference them, and because of that opportunity of being able to go through those hard times, the things that aren't fun, the things that are difficult, guess what? I got more intelligent based off of it. Yeah. So there is a reward. There well, is a reward, and if, as long as it's worth it to you, you know, keep pushing. And being smart is one of the most valuable things you can ever do. Anyone can be stupid, okay? Yeah. Literally. That's evident. Just look at Kim Kardashian. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I mean... But we if we don't want to be Kim Kardashian of real estate. Start educating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's uh, let's wind this one down. I want to remind everybody again about Inman Connect. So that's August second through the fifth uh, in San Francisco. So it's um, probably the best way to find it is on Inman.com or if you Google search Inman Connect uh, 2016, that'll take you right to the page where you can register and get all the information. There. There's a ton of great uh, speakers and then. Um, Brad, you mentioned like Inman Select as well. So if you want to tell, remind people what that's all about. Yeah, it's a membership. You get exclusive content, video, articles, business letters. I had mentioned to you, there's something called the Taste of Connect. We call it Connect on the Road, and that's the first day on August 2nd. You can come just for that day for free, um, and that's something to consider. Uh, if you don't, a lot of people come and love it, and then they sign up for the rest of the week. And I forgot to mention that it's for it's broken to Agent Connect, Broker Connect, and your broker agents for teams, brokers for teams and brokers, and then Tech Connect, and then we have a CEO thing that we have at, at Facebook. But uh, that's that is August second, and that's something you can attend at no charge. And the whole idea is to give people a deeper taste, an opportunity to connect, and then you can buy the whole you know not to under undersell my sales people. <laughs> There is a free day, and uh, you know it's a way to get a taste of it, and become part of the. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Well, I know that's I'm awesome. going to be there, Matt. You might you might fly up for mm -hmm. that, and you and I were talking about heading out from there. Yeah, uh, that's right. And it's you got to do live from there. You got to do live. We'll set you up in a booth or something. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at booth. <laughs> that's right. That'd be awesome, actually. That'd be so much fun. The podcast on Iman and on Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. we'll work together on that. Greg, you want to remind people how to get a hold of you for the McDaniel Challenge? Yes, you guys, uh, McDaniel Challenge, uh, this thing is called my cell phone. It does work. I pay my bills. I know I say this all the time, but McDaniel Challenge, guys, is an hour and a half to two hours of free. Big capital letters, F-R-E-E -E on that one. There is no strings or you know gadgets or gizmos that I'm going to pull and make you guys pay for something. You know, Just like Brad, he wants to give away a lot of free content. That's exactly what I'm doing. Um, get 
get booked, man. It is booking up so fast. I am Matt. I'm almost. I'm almost done booking the second week in September, guys. Uh, and then Matt and I are traveling the the next couple of weeks a lot. So we're going to bring putting you into October. So if anything is stopping you, blocking you, holding you back, hindering you, either mindset, marketing, you know, prospecting, you know, any cr kind of crazy thought that, that's stopping you, guys, talk to me. I've been doing this for almost 17 years. I've seen a lot of scenarios. I have the ability, you know, to hopefully help help you move past that blockade and get that get that get that business build that business that you truly want the success stories are starting to roll in now from people that are getting their businesses radically transformed just by hanging out because I'm not trying to pitch you on anything I will not coach you because that's not what I do I will assist you and help you build your business and then I open up the floodgates and I allow you to contact me at all all the time, which people are taking me up on quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, use your, your your chubby little fingers and press in the buttons in a certain order. My phone number is 925-915-1978. Again, 925-915-1978. Reach out to me. Please do this, guys. If you're on the fence, you're the perfect person that needs to be talking to me. Do it because I love you guys. I, honest to God, I want to see you guys succeed because you all deserve the life that you want of freedom. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that said, we'll wrap this one up. Uh, we do not have a guest on Wednesday, so it's the Wild Wild West. Me and Greg will be taking questions. And, crazy Town. <laughs> uh, no, Crazy Town. And then Friday, we've got uh, Kirby Scarrod, who is uh, one of the top agents in the Minneapolis area, sold an ungodly am a number of homes, something like 400-plus uh, uh, maybe in the, into the 500s last year. Super, super nice guy. Uh, very, very detailed, very into tracking uh, and lead generation. Knows exactly what his numbers are. It's going to be a really, really cool conversation with him. Cool. Uh, he's, I'm really excited for that one. That's on Friday. So until then, we'll see you guys back here at 3 Pacific on Wednesday. Yep. Love you guys. See you soon. <laughs>